What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin here, and today I was going to do a little work on my Lager Stromio. Now I'm sure you've all heard it called the crepe myrtle, um, but this is probably my top favorite bonsai tree that I have. If the house was on fire, I would probably have to grab two. This guy and the dogwood that I had the last time. Um, but these are definitely some of my favorite bonsai, and I think this would probably be my ultimate top favorite bonsai tree that I have. Now, interestingly enough, the crepe myrtle isn't actually a true myrtle. The uh, name myrtle comes from my great aunt myrtle. No, I'm just kidding comes from these smaller leaves uh, that bear some resemblance to a natural myrtle. And then the word crepe is in reference to the flower, crinkly-like flowers that are produced that remind people of crepe paper. Now, the flowers produced uh, come in various shades of pink, red, white, and purple. This one right here is what's called a crepe myrtle Natchez, uh, and it is the white flowering crepe myrtle. Now, the crepe myrtles do come in various sizes. I believe there are miniatures, dwarfs, uh, like a medium, and then a standard crepe myrtles. Uh, but be aware that uh, some are rather small, some are a little shrub-like, uh, and some are very, very tall trees that can get rather large. Uh, so you always want to make sure that you have enough room in your garden for the crepe myrtle, especially because the natural look of the tree is often a multi-branch species that kind of... Uh, gives way to several different branches that make the tree wider that can support a more uh, vast array of blooms that the tree is actually famous for. So you always want to make sure you have enough room for your crepe myrtle in your yard. And they are great trees to have because their roots won't really damage uh, sidewalks, streets, driveways, or any kind of structures there by the tree. So they are great plants for any kind of uh, garden, or even if you have a huge area that needs to be uh, taken up and have a little bit of more of an eye-catching appeal right there, your crepe myrtle is going to be a great plant to have. Now, over the course of uh, the last couple hundred years, there have been so many advancements. More along the last decade or so, uh, the trees have been kind of crossbred to prevent some problems with powdery mildew and cold hardiness. Uh, and more prevalent showy flowers. So about 200 years ago, a botanist and a plant explorer brought these Asian plants over to the Americas by way of like South Carolina. And uh, they were actually one of the first plants to be brought over from uh, Asia that did relatively well in our country, but particularly in the South. I believe their zones are about six and seven on down, uh, but they did have a little bit of a problem with powdery mildew because of our humid uh, southern environment. Uh, but here lately there have been some advancements and the National like, Gardening Association was able to produce some uh, that are more susceptible to the powdery mildew uh, disease that wipes a bunch of these guys out. And they were all given Native American names, too, to help kind of identify them. Uh, I believe it was like the Hopi, uh, Nanches, Zuni, and Arapaho uh, were some of the names. So if you do ever find any of those varieties, just know that they are better for the code. Uh, they don't have a problem with powdery mildew, and they do have more prevalent showy kind of flowers also. Now, the National Gardening Association lists about 400 crepe myrtle varieties and there's also now an ebony series where the uh, crepe myrtle plants have black kind of reddish leaves and uh, red and pink colored flowers as well so they don't all just come in uh, green leaf varieties the plants perform best in a lot of sunlight a lot of direct sunlight and if your plant is in a lot of shade, you will actually reduce the amount of flowers that are prevalent. And you will also have a problem with um, diseases like powdery mildew as well. Typically, established plants are more drought tolerant. Uh, but if you do go ahead and plant one out in your yard, uh, for the first year, you'll want to actually cover that plant up after you plant it with some mulch to help hold in more moisture around the roots. Uh, and for that first year, you'll want to water it kind of deeply 
and more frequently. Now, as the second year approaches, you'll want to kind of back off on some of that watering uh, because they do have a problem with root rot and the powdery mildew as well. So anytime you want to water these plants, you'll want to water around the root base to make sure that they get ample and deep water, uh, but not to water as much after the second year uh, because they are more drought tolerant, uh, the more established they are. Now, I don't really have too much I want to do with this plant. Uh, I do have a little bit of wiring that I'm wanting to remove uh, and a little bit of pruning. You have to be very careful with crepe myrtles uh, and the pruning. Like too much of an aggressive pruning is known as crepe murder, uh, and that often produces really leggy, kind of weak growth that won't support the flowers uh, that come out in abundance. So you should never prune a crepe myrtle before it blooms. But you can kind of cut off some like lengthy growth or any kind of leggy growth uh, or anything that looks a bit weak or kind of any branches that are crossing that may end up rubbing raw and opening that will invite disease and pest in as well. But uh, you don't want to prune too much. Branches that are wired up nicely here that I'm gonna go ahead and start removing some of this wire on here before the branches get too tight. Now bear with me, you might not be able to see what I'm doing, but uh, I do have some of these smaller branches that I've used the thinner wiring to kind of hold them in place. Now if you know me, I don't believe in wiring too much. I like the natural look of a tree, and I'll often forget to remove the wiring and do a lot more damage than good on my tree. Now I can see a little bit of grooves in here from the wiring, which tells me that this wire was on a little bit too long. So I want to go ahead and remove any other wiring that I may see on any other branches that may begin to cut off. Now one of my favorite things about this bonsai tree is its nabari, or its root flare down here at the base uh, where the roots are. It's very dramatic and looks great on this bonsai specimen. But as I said earlier, I always, uh, insulate my trees with some straw so I have a little bit of added straw that I need to remove down here so that no pests will come in and set up shop underneath now I've checked the wiring down below around the roots to make sure it's not too snug either I think I've got another year out of that before I can remove the wiring in place to hold this tree upright Alright, now I'm sure one of the comments I'll get is, uh, this is what mental illness looks like. No, I'm just kidding. Why aren't you recording outside? Well, I was trying to record outside and uh, my neighborhood is very populated with a bunch of children and they're outside screaming and having a good time because it's summer. So, I did not record outside today, so don't come for me. And as I said earlier, you don't want to prune too much with any crepe myrtle. So I'm going to kind of take off any dead or uh, broken looking branches that may be on here. Any kind of branches that are really kind of weak. Some dead branch structures are intentional. And I think all in all, he looks fairly well. Now, crepe myrtles are very sought after, especially in the south, because they do so well down there as well. Uh, but here in Zone 6, uh, we do have a couple varieties that are right at home here in the kind of colder climate. Now, crepe myrtles are known as more of a year-around plant, especially in the south, because they get that beautiful kind of uh, showy flowers in the spring and summer. And then they get a very drastic kind of fall colorish. Uh, around the fall time and then in the uh, winter time their bark is uh, very beautiful especially on older trees the bark kind of peels and reveals kind of a cinnamon or tan color with this kind of gray colored bark so they are showy trees the year over now the only other thing I didn't really mention is the soil I think I said that they prefer a well draining nutrient rich soil uh, but they can tolerate a vast array of different kinds of soils, whether it be kind of clay and clumpy and compacted on down to almost like a sandy loamy kind of situation or a mix thereof. But uh, the soil pH, they do prefer slightly acidic. They like it anywhere from about 6.0 on up to 7.5. And some people say that they even give it a really kind of 5.5 
leeway with the soil acidity but I keep mine slightly acidic around 6.0 up to about 6.5 and I think he's uh, happy with that. I don't really feed mine too often. Uh, you got to be careful not to get too much of a nitrogen rich fertilizer that will promote uh, more leafy growth as instead of the uh, flowers. Uh, so I don't feed mine too often but there are certain uh, crepe myrtle foods out there that are available that uh, give the crepe myrtle all the uh, direct micro and macro nutrients that they do prefer. And as always, I wanted to take a moment to thank my Patreon subscribers. If you have a plant question, this is the best way to get a hold of me. I often get bogged down with a lot of plant questions and emails and comments. Well guys, this has been Justin reminding you to go out and plant a tree. Let's reforest the world. And also, don't forget to leave me a comment and let me know what's your favorite type of bonsai, or just your favorite kind of crepe myrtle. I like the twilight and zuni, uh, but the deep reds are beautiful as well. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know any time that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.